We'll move on now then to our next speaker. I'd like to introduce Martin Knoxon, who many of you will know. Um, I'm just trying to find Martin's biography now. Martin's well able to introduce himself, but Martin is a long term, long time disability advocate and campaigner. He is one of the people who brought the Centre for Independent Living to Ireland and has been a champion of the independent living movement with his role as co-executive director at the European Network of Independent Living. Martin also works as regional support officer with the DFI, the Disability Federation of Ireland. And recently, Martin established, and you're going to have to give me a hand here with the, the name of your project, please, Martin. Asana. Asana Tapita. Thank you. Am I live? I think you're live. So I'll hand you over to Martin. Thank you very much indeed, Martin. Sorry. One, two, three. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Just move to the next one. Yeah. Um, this uh, I, I'm supposed to talk about peer innovation and peer activities and things like that. So um, basically, I'm just going to give you a short story about how some some people, including myself, back about 25, 30 years ago, we were we were trying to get into the right institution, to the right place to live out our days kind of thing. And one of the difficulties was those big long queues, you couldn't get in, right? And we were kind of got together and see what we could do in terms of uh, perhaps even skipping the queue or making sure we got into the one we wanted to get into. So we came together and we talked about it and the more we got together and talked about things generally, we realized that none of us wanted to go back into an institution or to go into an institution, that what we wanted to do was actually live life just like everybody else. And with that, we, we started to look at things differently and we pushed to develop an independent living philosophy, our practice in Ireland, and an approach. And hence came the Centres for Independent Living. Very exciting time for us in our lives, etc. It was great. Uh, we started to change everything. We moved away. We were no longer in a queue, dependent, etc. We we grew in ourselves, our self-esteem, our expectations went went up nearly as high as everybody else's, right? So we had a very, very simple approach, very, which is the philosophy uh, practice of practice. Nothing about us would out us. We had big difficulties though. We had to roll back the dependency that had gotten a hold of us, right? And we had to learn to actually, if you wanted something to happen, it was up to us. We were the people that wanted to, needed to make things happen and make a change. And there was lots of people, whether current day genio or whatever uh, department that's had to want to help. But we, it was up to us to, to build that picture. So after about five years or so, we, uh, we started renting houses. We started all, the, all sort of kind of things. Our key things was uh, try and sort out mobility, transport, that kind of thing. What we did there was we developed an, uh, an organization called Fantastic. It's still going on, on today, etc. It was to be a door to door door-to-door -door service for ourselves because we couldn't get a taxi, we couldn't get on a bus. We didn't stop there at all. We made sure that we uh, held the CIE's feet to the fire and we made sure that we got accessible transport. It's been a long time coming. It's still slow. But the interesting thing about it is back in 1993, since we're all talking about 1993, there was uh, Dublin Bus had a funding from Europe uh, to provide accessible transport. So they provided the accessible transport just around the city. Uh, so nobody could get to it or get home from it. And the evidence then was at the end of the day was there was no need for it, right? These people didn't need 
this kind of transport. They'd be better off in ambulances and things like that. So we put, we fought back a little bit and we reminded the Department of Social and Family Affairs, Social Welfare at the time, that actually they were paying, they were paying Dublin Bus to behave badly. And we said, we're going to take it out on you and Mr. Department of Social Welfare. And at the time, we'd, we'd a reasonable good access in there, so we put the heat on them. They put the heat on Dublin Bus to sit down and talk to us and sort it out. And after that, we went, well, we went to parts of Europe and said, uh-uh, we're going to block your money, etc. So yes, now today, not alone in Dublin are people using the buses, but we're out saying, why is there only one accessible spot on the bus, right? Because if two or three people want to go out together, they have to take the next book, the next book, etc. And so we're putting the heat on again, and we're saying, and we're reminding the transport group today, actually, how much money do you really get from government? How much of our money do you get? And it's quite a sizable amount when you look at it. And we're saying, so you're paying for bad services. You're paying for services that don't, don't include all of us. So anyway, that's how we grew. We had PA services very quickly by 1993 and uh, all of that. And we did, we did all right. We had a nice little section, CILs. There was about 25 at this stage, very quickly, because we were in charge and we wanted, to, we knew what we needed, actually. And guess what? We discovered some very big differences, right? Everybody else was busy trying to decide what we need. As for we simply approached it and said, what, about, what is it we want? Right? But even today, and I look at the evaluations and things like that, and so much effort is going into it, right? Um, about measurements of what people need. How about just simply finding out what people want, right? And everybody is happier, it's much cheaper, and it gets, it gets the job done much better. And how do I know that? Because that's how the rest of society live, right? They live according to the way they want to live. Anyway. I better get on to the next little bit. bit. Um, this project, Oshinatakyafta, that was a very deliberate name, Oshinatakyafta. It's to make people say, what? Right? And it does do that. And the number of people that apologize for not being able to pronounce it and all of that, so they can't just run away, then they have to find out a little bit more. So anyway, Oshinatakyafta, the name simply means supported facilities. And we moved on to this about two years ago, really. And we moved on because there's a number of things, right? While as we were going well with PA services, etc., what was starting to happen, particularly over the last five, eight years, is, is that a whole lot of new rules were coming in, corporate rules for us as individuals. We had corporate policies when it came to health and safety, guard of vet team, oh, everything, right? Whether my house, whether my home is a working place, or whether it's my home, etc. And all of those different things made things, made life extraordinarily complicated. And the bigger you were as an organization, and I'm sure some of you who run organizations will understand all of these kind of things, and so forth. And I understood, and we were saying to some of the organizations, actually, yeah, we do understand. We understand good governance, etc. But you're governing something that we don't need and we don't want. So that's why we've kind of set up our own Oshinatakirte. It was established in October uh, 2010 with development funding from Genio. There's four or five participants at the moment and a lot more trying to get on. But we have to prove that we're worth it for the moment. Um, all participants had some experience in running their own PA services. Just next one there. Okay, and th this is um, this is the type of model that is. It's very simple. There's nothing complicated about it. It's a little bit of almost everything that people said about today, right? We want to first of all empower ourselves, own my own company. I'm in charge of my own finances. I'm prepared to take on all the HR issues to do all those different things. And guess what? 
I'm prepared to take help and receive and accept help from people who have expertise to give you that help, right? And finally, anyway, the next thing, and we do that through a circle of support, and then we have a net, uh, we become part of a network, and that's the Ocean of Top Gift. So we're running, in some cases, individual companies, but also we are running, uh, some people can come in as sole traders, etc. The reason we went for individual companies limited by guarantee is it gives protection to people who want to come on board and support us and be part of our governance and help us through this early stage at least. So that's, that's what we're doing. People are liking it and maybe the next one. Um, People are liking it. You know what's happened everywhere else. We're not doing anything new. We're just doing what disabled people all over the world are doing. Simple as that, when they get the choice to do it. And then finally, we just, next one again, Latin. I think we, we're now collaborating with some of the, actually, the uh, ferry service providers that we're running away from in one way. And we're actually saying to them, look, we have an experience. You can afford to pay for it. And we're going to bring you a distance. We're going to bring you into this whole new thing, whole new world, and we'll be partners with you all the way through. So that's where we're at, really, at the moment. And thank you very much for listening. Um, it means something to us. I don't know what it means to everybody else. And uh, so forth. Thank you. much and that was uh, that was really really interesting and I, I still can't uh, say the name of your project but now I understand your strategy there so in terms of um, where we're at how are we for time now are we uh, we are we okay yeah so Martin took us back to the beginning of the CIL movement in this country and its philosophical roots. He talked about the need to roll back the dependency that people had got ensnared in and that important piece uh, with any social movement where those uh, people within it need to self-determine and spend time alone to reflect and to get stronger away from, I suppose, in this case, the prying eyes of some of the, the professionals that we've heard about that can over-service people and overplay their hand in people's lives. So Martin took us then through some of the lobbying campaigns and the, the battles at local, national and indeed European level that the Centre for Independent Living involved themselves in and I have no doubt that that was extremely demanding work but he reminded us that the battle isn't over. Uh, over yet that, you know, as Brian described it this morning, this is, this is forever work. Um, so Martin is, of course, talking about the process that some people call self-directing. And it, it, as he described it, it was very much an organic journey and it sounds like a very exciting journey that, that him and the rest of the CIL movement, both in Ireland and internationally, have been involved in. Martin talked also about the industry that's developed around the assessment of needs and he reminded us of the difference between needs and wants and reminded us, you know, hey, I'm here, we're here, ask us, ask us. Um, so then he moved on to speaking about the Genio funded project that was set up in 2010 that currently has four or five participants but a waiting list um, of, of, of members of people actively trying to, to get involved and to set up and self-manage their own limited companies and then Martin finished on, on the note that now the tables have turned and uh, the service providers that at one point he might have been seen running away from and now coming to him and asking him to partner with them around his expertise in how to do this and to do this well one person at a time so thanks very much Martin